Good morning, New Beginnings family. My name is Pastor Neil Platon, and I am your North Campus Pastor. We hope you find what you seek in this time of worship. As we center our hearts today, here reflect now on these words. We come this morning as doubting Thomases, fearful disciples, sorrowing exiles, and rejoicing psalmists. Our Lord comes to us as the risen Christ, the Christ of peace, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of forgiveness, the God of life, the God of new birth and new beginnings. God comes to us today to show us the fullness of His joy. Let us now follow God that He may lead us to the paths of life and living hope. Let us worship God. Rejoice, friends, for the Lord has called us here. We, we come, come joyfully, for we have heard the good news of Jesus' resurrection. Open your spirits to receive all of God's blessings. May God shower blessings upon us so that we may in turn bless God by our service. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Crown him with many crowns, all armor upon his throne. Our color, heavenly emblems of hope, losing body soul. Awake my soul and sing, all him who died for thee, and hail him as I match Generous God, we thank you for your presence with us in all our lives. As we gather this morning, we are reminded of our many times we have doubted and feared. Today, banish our fears with the memory of the resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ. Remind us again 
all through all our troubles, doubts, and fears, your power, mercy, and love are with us. Amen. New Beginnings family, here are some of the announcements that we would like for you to know. First of all, a word of thanks to those of you who have joined us and participated during last week's Monday Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter services. We would like to thank also those who have given flowers for the last Sunday's Flower Cross. Furthermore, we would like for you to know that if you have any pastoral needs, you can still reach us by calling our church office at 909-515-5770. Also note that despite our campus closures, that you can still mail your offerings and financial contributions to the church. You can also give through our website by clicking the donate button or through text. Here now is a short video on how to do it through texting. Let us now prepare our hearts for prayer as we sing Kumbaya. Will you bow your hearts with me as we come to God in prayer? O oh Lord, we listen to the news, read the newspapers, and wonder if peace will ever reign in our world again. Today, we have been invited to be with your disciples in that hidden place where they also wondered about peace and hope. You broke through the locked door you shattered the darkness, and they were abolished again. Help us to understand that you will bring peace to each one of us. Forgive all those times when we treat this moment of revelation as though it was impossible. Lord, give us the courage to reach out to you and touch our hearts once again. Lord, we come to you this day seeking peace and release from our fears and our darkness. We know that you are here with us, guiding, healing, and loving us. Help us to reach out to others with the same love you give to us. Make us people who bring words of compassion and hope, actions of help, and loving kindness to all we meet. Place, Lord, our feet on the pathway of life, offering ourselves in our gifts for your holy realm. 
Encourage us to grow and learn about ministries of reconciliation and compassion. When we falter, pick us up. When we fail, remind us that you believe in us. When we turn and run because of our fear, bring us home again. All of these things we ask in the name of our Lord and of our Savior, Jesus Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. Our scripture this morning is from John 20, 19-31. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side, and then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was also called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt. Believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written here in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and through that believing, you may have life in his name. The words of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
This morning's passage in John happened in the late afternoon. On the same day, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb where Jesus' body had been buried, found the tomb empty, and was later visited by the resurrected Jesus. And so our passage this morning begins after Mary shares this great news to the disciples that Jesus is risen and alive. But instead of rejoicing, the disciples run off to one of their homes, close the doors behind them, and lock them out of fear. Out of fear that those who had attempted to silence Jesus by arresting him and putting him to death would now come after them, and especially out of fear of Jesus himself. Now that he's alive, what would Jesus think of his friend Peter, who denied that he knew Jesus, not just one time, but three times after Jesus was arrested? And what about the other disciples, Jesus' closest friends, who have been traveling with him for three years, how could they face Jesus after he had cared for and invested in them for so long? And yet, the minute he was arrested, they bailed on him. They fled and left him to fend for himself in the most excruciating moments as he was spit on, ridiculed, and beaten, nailed to a cross, and hung from it until he took his final breath. Would Jesus be so infuriated with them that he would give up on them? Would he deny, betray, and even condemn them because they had denied and betrayed him? Would they no longer have a place in the kingdom of God? I can often relate to Jesus' disciples in this passage they have been many times throughout my life when I have denied and betrayed Jesus. And because of this, I tend to avoid him out of fear of what he might think of me or say to me. Were I to actually confront him in those moments? And I wonder if there are others here this morning who can relate to these disciples as well. I wonder if many of us often choose to run and hide behind closed and locked doors in attempts to keep Jesus out of our lives because we fear what he might think and say about our failures, our insecurities, or our actions of denying, avoiding, and betraying him. I wonder if many of us choose to run and hide because we fear that if we actually do unlock the door for Jesus to enter into our lives, he just might not like what he sees. Yet in our passage, when the disciples hide behind closed doors, hoping to avoid Jesus and what he might say or do were he to find them, they are unsuccessful. Even behind locked doors, Jesus shows up. And yet, he does not appear to them in the way they had expected and feared. Jesus doesn't show up angry, bitter, or even judgmental. He doesn't order them to give him answers as to why they denied, betrayed, or even hid from him. He doesn't demand that they ask him for forgiveness. But instead, he just shows up, holds out his wrist so that they can touch the holes where he had been nailed to the cross and points to his sides so that they see the gash where he had been stabbed with the spear. And he says, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I send you. You see, instead of coming with vengeance and wrath, as the disciples feared, Jesus just shows up to them in the midst of their fears and failures and immediately and freely offers them the peace, love, and grace of God. 
before they even have the chance to open their mouths to explain their actions or to ask Him for forgiveness. Jesus just shows up to them in that small home where they were hiding from and avoiding Him because Jesus wanted them to know that no matter what, they are claimed as God's beloved children and are cherished and loved by God unconditionally. Not all of his disciples were present to witness Jesus as he appears to them that day. Thomas the twin is missing for some reason. It may have been because he was out running errands at the local market or had gone to find out for himself if Jesus was alive. We just don't know. But whatever the reason, Thomas misses out on this incredible event and opportunity. And so you can just imagine his surprise when he later comes to the home after Jesus had departed and is greeted by the other disciples who tells him that they had just seen their friend Jesus, that the one who had been arrested, killed on the cross, and buried in the tomb only a few days before is now alive and is offering them new life as well. But Thomas doesn't believe it. Now, I have heard this passage from John preached on a lot, and unfortunately, I've heard too many sermons and I've read too many commentaries on this text that do it a disservice by emphasizing Thomas's doubts and his questions and by suggesting that because of these doubts and questions, this doubting Thomas was unfaithful. I don't know about you, but if that were me coming back to the rest of the disciples, I'd respond just as Thomas did. I think these disciples were crazy. Or at least I think they were playing me. And like Thomas, I would hold on to my doubts and questions. I would refuse to believe until Jesus himself held out his scarred hands in front of my eyes and allowed me to touch his wounded side. And yet, even though Thomas doubted that Jesus had been raised from the dead and appeared to his friends, and even though he missed out on Jesus the first time, Jesus showed himself to the disciples. A week later, Jesus comes back to the home and appears to Thomas as well. Jesus comes back to the home so that Thomas can see, touch, and experience Jesus for himself. And without judgment or condemnation, Jesus asks Thomas to touch his wounded hands and sighed, and he says, Peace be with you. This morning, as we began worship, we offered to God our thanksgiving. And boy, do we have a lot to be thankful for. For just as Jesus showed up to his disciples in our passage in the Gospel of John, claiming them as his beloved children, Jesus shows up to us in and throughout our lives even now as we face this big uncertainty in life due to COVID-19. You see that even in our times of fear, doubts, and questioning, and even when we choose to deny, flee, and hide behind closed and locked doors, Jesus has and will show up. And when He does, He claims us as God's beloved children, no matter what our failures are or actions against Him. And He offers us His peace and grace before we can even ask for forgiveness or even acknowledge our wrongs. And even if we, like Thomas, miss the first or second or third time, Jesus shows up. And even if we shut our eyes, turn the other way, or go out the back door when He comes to us in order to avoid Him, Jesus will keep on lovingly and patiently returning to us over and over 
and over again until we are ready to open our eyes to see Him, reach out our hands to touch Him, and accept the peace, forgiveness, and unconditional love that our Lord offers. In our baptism, we are claimed by our compassionate and merciful God who loves us in and through all of our failures, our insecurities, our doubts, and our questions. In our baptism, we are called and welcomed into God's family that is full of grace. We are welcomed into this kingdom of God that nothing and no one can keep us from. For as the Apostle Paul stated in his letter to the Romans, not even death nor life, not even angels nor demons, not even the present nor the future, nor anything we have done or will do can separate us from this love of God. So as we continue to journey through this Easter season, learning to live as Easter people and proclaiming the good news that indeed Jesus has risen. Let us also continue to remember our baptism. Let us remember that each one of us has been welcomed into the kingdom of God and each of us is and will always be claimed by God as God's beloved and cherished child. Because no matter what we do or say or think, in the midst of all our fears, failures, and doubts, Jesus will keep on showing up to us, offering us God's peace whenever we are ready to accept it. And no matter how imperfect we may be, just like the earliest disciples, Jesus continues to call out to us in and through our baptism, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. So friends, let us go as Jesus sends us out into the world as Easter people, proclaiming this good news that indeed Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen. Join me for our final hymn, hymn number 189, Fairest Lord Jesus. Jesus shines brighter, Jesus.
Jesus shines bluer than all the angels heaven can hold. Beautiful Gracious God, again we give thanks to you for this day of worship, for giving us this opportunity to be with you as we lift up our joys and our concerns and as we praise you, O Lord, for all the many blessings that you have given to us in our lives. Lord, we thank you that even in the closed doors of our lives at times, you break through. You come to us, you call us by name, and you reach out to us. And so we thank you. Even when Thomas doubted that you showed him, O oh God, the way, you showed him the light to follow. And so do we. As you lead us, into life everlasting, O oh God, we come to you. And so now, Lord, we offer our thanks as we gather our hearts this morning. And Lord, as we conclude this service, O oh God, we pray for your blessings to be with each of us. We ask for your protection to be with our, with our people as we continue with life, may your love and grace and protection be with us always. This we pray in the mighty name of our Lord and of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and in his mighty name we pray. Amen.
family and friends, our worship is now over, but our life with God and with each other continues. Hear now our benediction. In great mercy, God has given us new birth into a living hope. For it is the risen Christ who stands in our midst and says, peace be with you. And so we go forth to walk the path of new life and living hope as Easter people. And may the peace of the risen Christ be with us always. Go in peace, my dear friends, and until we meet again, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.